Well, here we are. We've just arrived at the conference in this fabulous hotel in Birmingham, and um, I've got double beds and ensuite and all sorts of things like that. And we're just fixing it with um, internet and everything. And um, just ordered a very expensive coffee. So we've learnt from that, and um, yeah, ready to go in about half an hour. Hello, the York and Hull District. I'm Gareth Powell, the Assistant Secretary of the Conference. And one of my roles at the conference is to make sure that the business gets done in an orderly and efficient manner. The agenda is put together largely by the Methodist Council that sends various reports to the conference and then other bodies such as the Stationing Committee, uh, the Law and Polity Committee and the Faith and Order Committee and then various working parties that report back to the conference having been established by previous conferences. One of those reports this year came from a working party established last year to review how the church might respond to changes in marriage legislation. We had the chance to have one conversation where we weren't talking about any resolutions but sharing ideas and feelings about the new legislation and about what we as a church might do about it. One thing that strikes me is the importance of what we say on this topic for those outside the church because however much they don't think church really means anything for them or that God doesn't really mean anything for them, this is a question that I personally as a representative of the church get asked a lot. What do you think about same-sex marriage? And what we say now, in respect of that question, has a great impact on our mission and our witness in the world, as well as our unity within the church. We passed a resolution to appoint a working party to continue the work of the working party this year in respect of these issues. They've been charged with looking at such topics as the nature and authority of the Bible, and how we can continue to live together when we don't really believe the same things. There was also a resolution passed which said that anyone in the Methodist Church, whether lay or ordained, can enter into a same-sex marriage as they already can with a civil partnership. And the last resolution I'd like to tell you about is one that was passed which alters the guidelines for Methodists about the use of Methodist premises for the blessing of same-sex relationships. Then other significant reports this year were statistics for mission that paint a very honest but sometimes stark picture of the numbers of Methodists but also offered opportunities for us to reflect on growth and the way that we seek to proclaim the gospel in local communities. What can I say? Uh, we'd already seen the conference agenda report before we went to conference and it did not make good reading. I suppose overall it, w it was just depressing. I mean, where do you go as a church, if we're honest, when you've declined by 31% between 2003 and 2013 and by 10% over the last three years between um, 2010 and 13? What do you do? We're not a church which gets depressed easily and there were plenty of positives within those statistics. If a church is large, it tends to be growing faster. Uh, there was obviously concern for our rural, rural churches, but we were reminded actually that the size of the church is not necessarily the reason for it continuing as against a church with a much smaller congregation. It's got to be a vibrant church, it's got to be a mission church, it's got to be a church which demands that we put our resources into that church. I think the decision's up to us, isn't it? Um, if we want churches to succeed, then we have to be mission-shaped churches. If we don't and we're into maintenance mode, then I'm afraid the future does not look good. There were other reports that related to ministry issues. 
reports that related to the policy issues that on the one level might sound terribly boring, but as most conference members know, is really a terribly exciting part of the conference. And therein lies the story, of course, because these reports, in very different ways, relate to the way that we conduct our life as the people of Christ in local communities. Enabled, freed up, we hope, certainly encouraged to be responsive by our discipline. We heard from the Youth Assembly. Last night we discussed the Three Generate report, um, which is a report from the Children and Youth Assembly about what came through at Three Generate this year in 2013. Um, it was very interesting and there were lots of topics that came up, including consultation on same-sex marriage, mental health, and interfaith, and also that Three Generate would like um, these presidents to be a, a non-voting speaking member of council, um, which is to be debate, debated today. Um, there were some great um, testimonies from young people about what they've gained from Three Generate and how they wanted to change, and, um, and there were some very interesting points put across by adults about how we engage young people outside of the event. Um, I think one of the main things that came out of the report was that Three Generate is one event, but youth participation is for all, always, and we need to promote youth participation among our district circuits and churches. We had a very good debate on Israel and Palestine. It was focused on boycott, divestment and sanctions movements uh, towards Israel and, and the call for a boycott of Israel until it ends its occupation. This was based around a briefing document that the Joint Public Issues team of the Church had produced for us following a notice of motion from last year. The briefing document was very good, it gave pros and cons, and then we had a debate about it uh, in the conference. The, many of the motions were, that um, the Council were, were saying were basically around the idea that we should read the document, understand it, consider it as a church, uh, and then maybe come back in three years' time to decide whether or not we want to take anything further. There was a notice of motion which uh, proposed that and said, well actually the situation in Israel-Palestine is so important and so, and so fast-moving, we need to come to a mind uh, next year. That unfortunately, from my position at least, um, was defeated. But nevertheless, from my position as well, there were some very positive things. And so we're called uh, to um, boycott settlement goods from illegal Israeli settlements on the West Bank. Uh, we're called to write to our MPs uh, in order to campaign for an end to the occupation. Uh, and we're called to continue to speak about these matters within our churches and about what the occupation is doing. We're called to work with organisations such as the Israeli Committee Against House Demolitions, Kairos Britain and the Ecumenical Accompaniment Programme in Palestine and Israel further on these issues. And so I think generally a good debate. You'll be aware that the Welsh Assembly has ruled that from December 2015, presumed consent for organ donations will be an opt-out option uh, and will come into place. The statistics are that only 31% are on the register, whereas 90% think that organ donation is a good idea. And most faith groups are in favour of organ donation. However, there seems to be some reasons why most don't carry donor cards and from the discussion it emerged that the reasons could be that firstly some people don't trust the brain death diagnosis, secondly personal religious and cultural beliefs, thirdly attitudes to the body at the time of death and fourthly the transplant may not work. This led to our further discussions on the importance of conversations with our families about what our individual wishes are in relation to organ donation. In countries where, this is, where there is presumed consent, there has been an increase in organ donation. However, it was acknowledged that many will have difficulty with presumed consent because there may be theological and other tensions. For example, whose body is it? Would it still be a gift of an organ if consent was presumed? Well, last night, some of us went to Jazz Church. Yes, you heard that right, Jazz Church. And it swung. We looked at the theology of music through music. We listened to the gospel. 
through jazz and blues and big band music. It was a great night. I found it very inspiring. Got some ideas about what we might want to do. We, I'm in a town which has got a lot of young musicians in it, a lot of people who are interested in jazz and folk and blues. So let's see what we can do. So the conference decided that we would look at personal Episcopal ministry. That means that we're going to look at the possibility of our presidents becoming bishops and the Anglicans are going to look at interchangeable ministry. So that there's no question of our ministers being reordained as Anglicans, but that Anglicans and Methodists will be completely able to minister in each other's churches. One of the things that I always love about conferences when the visitors come, whether it be from overseas or whatever, and one of the highlights of the conference this year has been that we've got three, had three, three representatives from the armed forces come to tell us about their ministry as chaplains. And it was absolutely incredible how the Methodist Church, we perhaps don't realise this, is in foreign parts just supporting troops, supporting sailors, supporting people in the Air Force, and tremendous work that's done for them. And uh, obviously wanting a, uh, having a recruitment drive as well, but that's fine. Uh, the video shots were great. And how great those chaplains are that go on on our behalf to support and uh, advise and be there for our forces. So the highlight for me was, yes, the World Church, because it always is, but certainly the chaplains is of the Armed Forces. Okay, we've just uh, come back from conference workshop on faith in food banks. Um, fantastic information given out uh, at the workshop. Um, in particular, the rise in food poverty that there is uh, around the country. In 2006, there were only 3,000 people using food banks. Two years ago there was 100,000 and this last year there was 900,000 using food banks. We were encouraged with this information and lots of other information besides to write to our MPs and to try and get government to change policy. I know it's so difficult. Um, it's a fantastic workshop and uh, it's just an illustration of how conference uh, is dealing with real issues on the ground. Well, for me, in amongst today's uh, second day of the ministerial session of conference, I was particularly um, excited about uh, one presentation uh, from Ruth Ledhill, the ex-religious affairs correspondent for The Times, and Meg Munn, um, a Labour MP and a Methodist uh, Member of Parliament for one of the Sheffield constituencies. The thing that really struck me that I'd want to share with everybody, and I made some notes interestingly, is Ruth Gledhill's comment that the Methodist Church has succeeded in making itself bland and disappearing from view. In other words, being so careful that we do things properly and we don't offend people and we don't get ourselves bad press and so on. And she was, I think, really trying to um, inspire us and excite us to be a bit interesting and to get things over. And Meg Bunn was saying not dissimilar things from the political, from the politician's point of view. And the advertising lot are proud to put things over. So what I want to take back to the district um, is the idea that we need to promote ourselves tons more than we do and be proud of what we do and, and let's face the consequences of doing that. In many ways, these reports can seem to be a very long way from your local Methodist church, when in fact, the way in which local churches are enabled to send memorials to the conference through the circuits of the district is a reminder of how the conference can seek to listen to the circuits, as well as the way it sends reports to the circuits. So, in the coming days, various districts and circuits will be hearing from the conference about continued pieces of work that seeks to involve them. For example, a notice of motion encouraging districts to think about the use of resources, the way in which we respond to biblical texts, part of the work of the same-sex marriage working party, and a variety of other reports that together seek to enable us to be more responsive to the love of God.